With weak decays now understood, it is time to turn to the experimental record given by high-energy physics experiments. The first class of high-energy physics experiments to discuss are proton-antiproton collision experiments. Such experiments were done in the European laboratory CERN in 1983 that led to the discovery of the W and Z particles of the standard model. Carlo Rubia and Simone van der Meer received Nobel Prizes for their important contributions to these discoveries. In a proton-antiproton collider, a beam of protons is accelerated to nearly the speed of light, and a beam of antiprotons is also accelerated to nearly the speed of light. These beams are sent in opposing directions and made to collide. Particles formed in the collision are then studied in large detectors. The upper figure on this slide shows what happens as understood from the ABC prion model. A proton is shown on the left, and an antiproton is shown toward the center of the diagram. We recognize that a proton is made up of a central C particle, and two A's, and a B, while the antiproton is its antimatter counterpart. After colliding, these particles can create many different combinations of particles. One clear possibility is for the collision to knock a B off of a proton and an anti-A off of an antiproton. Next, a pair of neutrinos can form out of the vacuum, with one going to bind the B and anti-A into a massive lepton, and the other neutrino being free. Note that vacuum creation of particle-antiparticle pairs is a very frequent occurrence in high-energy physics experiments. It happens all the time. And so the important point here is that we can readily see how proton-antiproton collisions can result in a situation where we have a massive lepton and a neutrino formed. This, along with the remaining shower of particles caused by the other portions of the proton and antiproton, is what has been discovered as evidence of the W particle in proton-antiproton colliders. The W particle mass times the speed of light squared has been measured to be about 80.4 GeV. Note that a GeV divided by the speed of light squared is a measure of the mass of the particle used in the high energy physics experiments. Since in the ABC prion model this phenomenon is caused by the freeing of an A and B prion, this allows us to arrive at the relation that the mass of the A particle plus the mass of the B particle all multiplied by the speed of light squared, is 80.4 GeV. A second possible outcome of a proton-antiproton collision is shown here. In this case, we note that it is possible for an A particle to be knocked off of a proton and an anti-A particle knocked off an antiproton. In this case, a B-anti-B pair and a pair of neutrinos can be formed from the vacuum. The B and one neutrino will bind to the anti-A to form a massive lepton, while the anti-B and the other neutrino will bind with the A particle to form a massive anti-lepton. This is exactly the signature found for the Z particle in high-energy physics experiments. The Z particle mass times the speed of light squared has been measured to be 91.2 GeV. Since in the ABC prion model this phenomena is caused by the freeing of an A and an anti-A prion, this ar allows us to arrive at the relation that twice the mass of the A prion multiplied by the speed of light squared is 91.2 GeV. Hence, the mass of the A prion is determined to be 45.6 GeV divided by C squared. And from our relationship on the previous slide, we can determine that the mass of the B prion is 34.8 GeV divided by the speed of light squared. On the previous slides, we have investigated experiments that helped us to determine the masses of the A and B prions. In order to determine the mass of the C prion, we turn to a look at deep inelastic collision experiments. Deep inelastic collision experiments are done by having a high-energy electron beam collide with hadronic matter. For the case of the proton, these experiments resulted in an observation that 35% of the proton momentum is carried by particles with positive charge, 
17% by particles with negative charge, and the remaining 47% by particles of neutral charge. Note that it is simple rounding error that leads to the sum of these values being only 99%. The parameters of the standard model were adjusted, and various processes proposed, so that the standard model agrees with these values by assigning 35% of the proton momentum to be carried by positively charged up quarks, 17% to be carried by negatively charged down quarks, and the remaining 47% to be carried by charge-neutral gluons. In the ABC prion model, it is readily observed that if we set the mass of the C particle to be 69 GeV divided by C squared, we have a situation where 35% of the mass of the proton consists of the positively charged C particle, 18% by the mass of the negatively charged B particle, and 47% by the mass of the two uncharged A particles. Hence, by fitting a single parameter, the C mass, to the data, we obtain a fit to all three data points. When developing this model, I was struck by this fact. There were not enough free parameters to fit the data, and therefore I took this to be a rather strong confirmation that the model proposed here is indeed representative of nature. The ABC prion model did not need an additional proposal to explain the result, while the standard model did. While the ABC prion model has many very nice features, this strong prediction serves as excellent evidence that the model is indeed a correct model for the makeup of our world. With the masses for the A, B, and C prions now estimated, it is a good time to step back and to take notice of an important aspect of the theory. Recall that we have postulated that the massive leptons are made up of an A antiparticle bound to a B particle with a force mediated by the neutrino. And yet we have just seen that the mass of the A is 45.6 GeV divided by C squared and the mass of the B is 34.8 GeV divided by C squared. But the mass of the lightest lepton, the electron, is only 511 kilovolts over C squared. Therefore, this model is proposing that the constituents of the electron weigh about 100,000 times more than the electron does itself. Of course, such a situation is entirely possible. Perhaps the best-known equation of all of physics, incorrectly attributed to Einstein, by the way, is the formula E equals mc squared. It is well known that the atomic nuclei that bind protons with neutrons have lower masses than the sum of the masses of the protons and neutrons making them up. The lighter mass is due to the effect of the binding energy between the protons and neutrons. Similarly, in the model proposed here, the light mass of the electron shows that there is considerable binding energy between the A and the B. In fact, the binding energy is so large that the mass of the electron is only a small fraction of the mass of its constituents. This condition also holds for the hadrons and mesons, as they are much lighter than their constituents as well. In fact, it is the relation E equals mc squared, that allows the deep inelastic scattering events to have such a clean result. Since the masses of the A, B, and C particles are so large, the deep inelastic scattering results are not determined by recoil, and the simple result seen on the previous slide is obtained.